to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, today we're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Yesterday was our, our anniversary. Cindy and I went up to the north shore of Oahu and saw some big surf and saw huge whales uh, out on the horizon coming all the way out of the water and just uh, making huge splashes. It was just a, a beautiful day. Cindy's a rodeo girl, so we went up and rode horses up at the Ko'olau Ranch and we walked through... Um, the area where Jurassic Park and and uh, King Kong and and uh, Lost and all kinds of films were shot up there. So we had a really great day yesterday. The adventure, the adventures of living in Hawaii. One of the things I love to do here too is to hike. You can hike. Uh, the Ko'olau Range is really a crater, uh, with half of it having fallen into the ocean towards Maui. And uh, the Ko'olaus are so beautiful because the higher up you hike in them, the more uh, jungly it gets. There's kind of a rain belt up there where the rain hits. We're on the west side where it's dry. We have no bugs or anything here. We keep our windows open all day long. But um, as you hike up these mountains, uh, the, the, the higher uh, you go in this ascent, you realize fewer and fewer people have made this hike. And when you hike out in nature, it's almost like there's some things there. I, I've hiked in such remote places with my cabin in Montana up by Glacier Park and other areas where I think I'm the only guy that's ever seen that tree or maybe I'm the only person that's ever seen that bird. You know, the lot, you think... I don't know, when you're out in nature, it's like God made this just for himself. That, that, that song that those birds are singing, no one's going to hear but him. And it gives him pleasure, his creation he called good. And we're going to talk with someone today who helps us kind of understand uh, more about our walk with God by taking a walk through nature. We're talking with Heather Makowicz. Did I say it right, Heather? Um, almost. Makowicz. You got Makowicz. it really close. Okay. Very good. <laughs> hey, Heather, <laughs> welcome to the show. Where, where, are you, where are you right now while we're talking with you? Thank you so much, Bear, for inviting me. I'm in Malvern, Pennsylvania. So um, is, what's it like right there right now? Is, it, is there snow on the ground or anything like that? No, actually, believe it or not, it's a bright, sunny day. I think God was just shining down on us today. We've uh, had a lot of gray skies. <laughs> uh, beautiful. I mean, this, is, this show is recorded, so this will be heard weeks later. But we're, we're here kind of in that springtime and when everything is changing over. In Hawaii, you know how we can tell whether it's summer or winter? How can you tell? The swells in the winter come to the North Shore, and the swells to the summer come from the South Shore where I live. And uh, so, yes, last few weeks, we had our first spring swells kind of show up, rolling in from the South. Probably as far away as uh, maybe New Zealand or, or further south, the swells came, came in. So, yeah, so it's springtime, in, springtime uh, in Hawaii, and I know it's springtime there where you are, too. So, welcome to our show. You know, I was thinking, you, your, your, your website is called... What, what is it? Give it, get everybody the name of your website. Sure. It's www.peakencounter.com. So it's for Peak Encounter Ministries, a brand new ministry. And you, and some of started. what you do is you lead, you lead people, you, you're a guide on hikes and you tell, tell us what yes. that's all about. Yes. Yeah, so, um, basically I think about God, um, and how he is always wooing us back to him and, that beauty, I just recently saw an article that talked, articulated it so well, beauty can save the world. You know, God invites us. He attracts us through communicating to us through nature. And and I've loved nature since I was a very little girl. So I thought, why not share other pe with other people about about the way that God can communicate to us through nature. Um, there's, I love working with the millennial generation and they're very attracted to nature, but often it's, you know, an end in itself and not a whole lot more. And mm -hmm. so this is a way that we can invite the more that nature is truly an icon to God's love. And it's not a place where we just stop with the beauty of the actual created thing itself. So yeah, we know, talk about that. You know, Father Robert Spitzer talks about the soul's upward yearning and the five basic desires that man has, justice, desire for truth, desire for love, desire for uh, a sense of being at home. But there's that one desire that 
animals really don't understand. But it, it, it's the, these five things separate us from the regular animal kingdom. And one of that fifth one is is the desire for beauty. But I remember when I when my kids were young, I would be like, I'd, I'd suddenly point, look at that, and they would look at where I was pointing. And they go, what, Dad, what? And I'm just pointing out in space. <laughs> look at that. And they're looking at what, what, what? And I go, look at my finger. Isn't my finger awesome? You know, this is the finger I'm pointing. <laughs> you know, and that's what people do when they go out in nature and all they do is see the nature. They're seeing the hand of God pointing to him. But if all you're looking at is the finger, the icon, the, the pointer, you're really, you're really missing out. I remember, um, uh, oh, my goodness, it was in the, it, it was a long time ago, early on in my career, uh, at one point I was, you know, uh, the Lord just, I would say he, um, it wasn't an audible voice, but I heard these words, you're my walking man, go walk. Mm. And from that point in my life, every, every coffee break, I went for a walk at lunch. I would take a walk. I didn't waste. I, that was my time of prayer and into the mountains and on and on and on. And ever since then, I've been his walking man. I don't, I, I'm sure I've walked around the world several times, you know, uh, there's something beautiful about the walk. Do you think there can be, a, I think you make, have a statement, uh, healing hiking for healing or something like that yes yes so there's there's a diversity of events that we have going on but my deep passion is for healing in the church i think about you know pope francis talking about um that there's a field hospital we're supposed to be a field hospital by um going to people and encountering um just the healing presence of god and offering that to to many people and why not do that in the healing presence of God outside in, in nature where there's silence and beauty and they're able to breathe a little bit. So, so that's what we do. I, I introduce scripture and I'll introduce. Okay. So wait a minute. I, I'm, I, yeah? Heather's, I want to do, I'm going to do one of your peak encounter hikes. So I go to okay. your website and sign up and then you go, yes. I suppose. And you say, then, then do you have, a, do you just meet up at the trailhead or what happens? Yes. Yeah, so, so far um, we have, just had one official event, mm -hmm. and that's actually at the Dalesford Abbey in Paley, Pennsylvania. So it's sacred ground. A lot of people have um, prayed over it. It's the home of the Norbertine Order ah. there. So they have several acres. And so we just start by introducing each other, and then I'll give some type of scriptural context. So this particular last month was on the Beatitudes mm. and the healing presence of God through the Beatitudes. So it's just giving a synopsis of what the Beatitudes are. And then I have a ponder and pray all weather um, prayer. I call them prayer gear. Mm -hmm. where people would actually go out in nature then and have the silence to encounter God through scripture on their own. And then at the end of that experience, we get together and I'll say, what did you newly discover? Mm -hmm. What did you, what did you notice? So, and often people have said, wow, we haven't given ourselves permission to be silent in a long time. Mm -hmm. And now I think I can hear God's voice in a way that was undistracted. And I saw, you know, and they were surprised. Mm -hmm. Like I saw that waddling duck and all of a sudden I realized I didn't have to take life so seriously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, mm -hmm. just got it. Yeah, a God made those ducks you know? waddle, didn't he? That's cute. Yeah, I know. I love it. It's so mm. much fun. So yeah, so that's those are some of the things that I do. And let me know if you want to sh me to share some of the others. Well, you know, the beautiful thing about that is uh, Jesus walked a lot. And if you, and we're going yes. to be, we're going to be going. By the time this airs, we're probably already back from our our pilgrimage in the footsteps of Saint yeah, Paul, which is I the appropriate see. thing. You know, they awesome. they all walked. You know, yes. and yeah. and walking is uh, that walking yeah. is uh, a meditative thing for someone like me that yes. has ADHD. Uh, the rosary is so important because it gives me a yes. tactile thing that keeps my focus. But when I walk, uh, I may have the rosary with me or not. I, I use my fingers a lot as my rosary. But when I walk, I go into a contemplative place. It's a place of solitude. And I mean, you know, my wife and I do a lot of walks too. But we, quite often, we're either praying the rosary or we're, or we're walking silently. And maybe we're praying individually. But, but walking is kind of like is kind of actually saying that faith is a journey. You know, that if there is a pedagogy, there's a there's a path that God is leading us on. That's right. That's right. And I and I love what you were talking about with um just 
going out in nature and walking and and uh, I'm reminded of the road to Emmaus and you know often we're accompanying another um, on that walk um, and particularly I read a definition of pilgrimage and pilgrimage as a prayer of the feet right mm. so when we're actually going out and walking why not that be that prayer of the feet where we're engaging um, that intentionality of mm-hmm. seeking God who's mm-hmm. already there waiting for us. We're talking with Heather Makowicz and her ministry is Peak Encounter. It's at, uh, the website is www.peakencounter.com. And she's bringing men and women together uh, uh, to go out into nature and read that. Uh, this, uh, some people call nature the second book, you know. Maybe it was the first book, actually, come to think of it. But it's another gospel. And it's a way to really hear God. And I'd like to invite you guys. I have a, one book in particular that really speaks to that, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, published by Hachette. It was my first book, and it was an Amazon bestseller. And in there, it's Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul is, is what I'm referring to. I mean, Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul. And I take people on a journey, kind of using surfing as a metaphor for uh, the spiritual journey in the contemplative life. So it's a real cool book. You ought to check it out. You can do that at our website, deepadventure.com. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We are so stoked. We had John Flynn, who has a, has a web design business called WebStarter, helped us redesign our website. And it's, it's, just, it's just incredibly, it's just so cool. And uh, now we can actually say to you these words. We want to invite you to go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear Wozniak's Mug Club, where you can, when you join the Mug Club, and there's different levels you can join, uh, join and you, get, you receive different benefits. But right now I'm highlighting the Mug Club. If you join the Mug Club, I think it's ten dollars a month. Uh, you get uh, you get premium access to the this radio show, for example, uh, before it's even released, and you get to watch it, not just listen to it. And of course, you get a great mug, and you get some Hawaiian coffee, and on and on and on. But go to our website, deepadventure.com, and click on Bears Mug Club and check out the benefits and help us out because uh, EWTN doesn't pay us to do this show. Uh, we have to raise all of our funds to make this happen, and that means it's listener supported. So we appreciate your help. And uh, we want to give back to you, too. And I think along with that membership comes my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, too. I'm not sure, but I think that's part of that benefit for the Mug Club uh, entry level that you can do. Hey, uh, we're with Heather Makowicz. She has a ministry, Peak Encounter, and uh, her website's www.peakencounter.com. I'm going to share with you something, Heather, and with the audience. It's in my book, Deep Adventure. I mean, it's in my book, Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul. I went through a a 20-year marriage and then a divorce which is, was subsequently annulled, uh, and it was devastating, just devastating. But I, my, my sanity uh, was that we lived on the, uh, in the, near the Santa Monica Mountains in Thousand Oaks at that time. My sanity was that I, and I, I had the children. I was putting them to bed. I was getting their school work done. I w- had custody of the children, and I kind of put them to bed. They weren't that young. They're, you know, the oldest ones were old enough to be babysitters, but uh, once I had that done, then I would go h- night hiking. The trailhead was only an eighth of a mile away. I'd drive there, and I'd go into the night. And I remember it was during the time when hale Bop, the comet, was being people could see. And I'd walk into the mountains, and I'd instantly go over a little knoll, and then I was by myself. You couldn't see any city lights or anything. And I would just walk through the pain. I would, I would walk and say, God, why? And it, I was suspended in pain. There was no way to get to just jump out of it or have it be removed. I had to walk through it. And I did that while hiking. I remember one point when some one particularly very difficult, sad day, I walked through that little area where there's a little stream. And I just, I don't remember how I got there, but I was lying on the dirt crying. And I'm not given to tears. So I don't, I just, it's not my, it's not something I can do very well. But I remember there would be little mud down below my eyes. And I go, I kind of like realized uh, it wasn't a, a healing uh it wasn't like, okay, let's put it this way. It wasn't like all the problems went away, but there was a healing there because I knew God was with me. And it's because I got down to the bitter end, down to the very bottom of the well, and got real with God. So your concept, I think, of hiking, is it hiking for healing or how, what, how do you say yes. it? hiking to heal. How, what what experiences heal. have and you had in that way? Well, um, I had an opportunity to make an alpha 
um, course a while back. Um, and it's a 10 week course where people can be on the fence, you know, on their faith. Um, and they struggle with the questions about God and who he is and our own identity. And from there, I had an opportunity to be prayed over for the Holy Spirit weekend. And we had to name obstacles that maybe were keeping us from growing close to God. Mm. Boy, was that hard. That was hard to face some of the, the areas that I was actually resisting with God, but it also brought up a lot of wounds. But well, what kind of example, can you give us any examples of, of either of those? Well, yes, I think that um, I would delay certain things in my life because I was struggling with perfectionism. Mm. So I had to have everything controlled. So I had to ask for prayer to be able to release that because then God was God and I wasn't God. Mm. So releasing that control was very, very difficult. Mm. But I can tell you after that experience, my whole body started to relax and then I was like, Lord, Lord, you, you know more than I do what is going to happen in my life. So from there, I made something called an unbound retreat. Neil Lozano, um, I think, heads it up and you can actually look up. It's the heart of the father. So that's actually um, a ministry where we have an opportunity again to go deep into the areas that we need to be set free from. So. Um, again, another deep inner healing for me. So from there, I had an opportunity when our parish started um, offering a healing prayer team and a healing prayer night, including Eucharistic adoration, healing prayer. Um, and people would just come. And it was once a month. And you come as you are. Mm. So nothing surprising. You know, people might come struggling with, do they believe in God at all? Um, you know, if they do, you know, maybe they need healing in their identity of God. Um, mm. cause people might not even come to God authentically until they know that they're going to be accepted for who mm. they are, right where they are. And that God's inviting them to something more. Yeah. You know, I so, have a, I have a, yeah. my, my father was a powerful man. He still is. He was ended up being a deacon in the Catholic church, but in the early days of the Catholic charismatic renewal, um, I had been, my mother had, my mother had been, she invited me and, and then my dad met some of the members, right? Uh, the, some of the leaders. And uh, he said, why don't you guys come over sometime? And they go, we'll be there Friday. So when dad said, why don't you come over sometime? That means like, don't ever come by. Because his business was very, <laughs> very oriented towards, you know, a lot of interpersonal relationship. And he was just burned out by the end of the day. And they came over and dad, dad but dad really did want to know about God. He had said, he had once had a prayer with the Lord, uh, he remembers this very well. Well, he said, God, I'm tired of looking for you. I've been looking for you and looking for you and looking for you and I'm done. I'm here. If you want me, come get me. And that was getting real with God. Yeah. And, uh, and that weekend, uh, when they came over, he, they said, do you want to have that? It's kind of like that St. Augustine moment when you just surrender all to the Lord. Do you want to give all that you are to the Lord? Do you want the Lord Jesus to truly be uh, Lord of your life? And he said, well, yeah, but I got to clean house first. I mean, if the, if, if the president was coming over, I would certainly have my house in order. And this is the king of kings coming into my house. I have to have my house in order. And yes, there's definitely benefit in, in, in uh, going to confession and seeking the sacrament of reconciliation and cleaning up a bit. But I remember uh, uh, Chuck DeBeau said to my dad, it's a come as you are party. That's right. Those very words you just shared. Uh, coming to the Lord is a come as you are party. You don't have to clean up and be perfect. Like my dad used to say, you don't have to hurry up, try hard and please me or hurry up, try hard and appease me. It's more of the words. Just come as you are. And, uh, that, you know, Bear, that reminds me of a homily I just heard yesterday, um, from one of our awesome priests over at the Abbey. And he spoke about a situation where this man came to him early on in his priesthood and said, you know, Father, I haven't been to confession in almost 40 years. And, um, and at the same time, he was like a little bit wincing. And, and this priest just, you know, God's mercy works so much through the priest. And he said, welcome home. Mm -hmm. Welcome home. Yeah. And see, there you hit, hit on another one of what 
Father Robert Spitzer was saying, that we have a need for beauty, what you talked about. We have a desire for truth, justice, love, and a desire to be home. I think that's just an interesting statement and insight. It's kind of the E.T. phone home sort of feeling, you know. Uh, yeah. Lastly, come home. You know, there's a feeling within us that tugs for a home. And I'll tell you, Heather, when I go out and I surf Pops, this incredible surf spot, a quarter of a mile out, surfing at sunset, when the, when the sun is setting and the wave is breaking, it turns the color of lava, the, the foam wow. on the wave. And when you're paddling back out, as the wave peaks up, you can see the sun through the wave in this golden greenish hue. And you drop in and I can feel the chatter of the water on the bottom of my surfboard when it's big and it's fast. And I see Diamond Head in the distance. And on the shoreline, I hear the sound of the tiki drums and the music being played. And it's, 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 it's now the sun has set and I can see the tiki lights all along lit up the fires. You would think I would feel at home, but my heart still yearns because I know that God has a, there's a home, I have a home in heaven. So as much as this, that I could not feel any more at home than at that moment, but in my heart, I know I'm not home yet. That feeling of being home. That's right. You know, I, I think again about the fact that we can fill ourselves up with all the good things in this life, but there's always yearning for more. And when I took these theology of the body courses through the Institute, we were just reminded about how that whole will always be there because we were created to have it completed when we enter back into heaven with our God. Who yeah, will you know, be God, the one completing yeah, it? God is an infinite God. And so that hole you're trying to fill with pornography or obesity or career success or pride or whatever, or working out too much, you know, whatever, um, that hole is an infinite chasm. It can only be filled by an infinite God. We're talking with Heather Makowix, and her website is, what is it? www.peakencounter.com. Uh, for men and women. Yes, absolutely. And you, you can join her on one of her uh, uh, nature hikes, ex expeditions, and questing into... Uh, yes, lots more coming. Lots more to come. <laughs> we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, I want to give a shout out to the Knights on Bikes. All you Knights on Bikes guys out there, there's over 4,000 members and growing. And a member of our board, Ace Bagley, is president of Knights on Bikes. Shout out to Knights on Bikes. Shout out to the Emmaus Riders. Shout out to the Iron Deacons. Shout out to the Catholic Crossbears Motorcycle Ministry. Shout out to the Emmaus Riders down there in Miami. And to all you non-affiliated rebel knuckle-dragging bikers, a shout-out to all of you guys. A shout-out to everyone uh, who loves adventure. The reason why bikers get on a motorcycle is because there's adversity, and, and through that adversity, we find adventure. Kind of the same feeling, too, like when you skydive, you hardly need to breathe because the oxygen just pours right into your, right through your, your flesh, right into your pores. Motorcycle riding, for me, is going out and getting a deep breath of air. Skydiving is getting a deep breath of air. And... Um, uh, seeking God out in in prayer is a way to is, is the ultimate uh, breath that you can receive. So shout out to all those those men out there who are listening who may not be bikers. I guess we can still invite you to our website. No, but men men are lonely. They're isolated. They've put up walls. They're they, they're afraid to admit where they're having challenges. And it's time for the walls of Jericho to fall that separate men from each other. It's time for the walls of Jerusalem, the walls that Nehemiah spoke about, to be rebuilt, where one man stood next to another with his spear and his shield protecting the man who was rebuilding the breach in the wall. It's time for men to come together to open up, to challenge each other, to encourage each other, to equip each other, to mobilize each other. And guess what? We have that place. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com, that's where you have to go for the men and women. You can sign your men up for them and join Bear's Man Cave. It's more than just a private secret Facebook group. But that's kind of where we, we have our hangout, our den, den meetings or whatever. But we, the men uh, all participate in a private Facebook group where I do some posting, some video posts. Men will, will post their inspirations. They'll post their challenges. They'll post their prayer requests. And we have a vibrant community of men who are who dude you're 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 you know we're so ashamed as men oh i i, I blew it 
Guess what? We're all bozos on the same bus. We all are facing the same challenges. We're there to encourage each other to open up and be transparent. And the impact on men's life of the Bears Man Cave is amazing. And you're also invited then to be part of our our our, uh, our video hangout, our meetup. Every two or three or four weeks, I'll go, we're going to have a video meetup. And we use a certain technology and all the men get on and we talk to each other. We have a two-way conversation and we really get to know each other. So men, go to deepadventure.com. Join Bears Man Cave. Uh, we're talking today with Heather Makowix, who uh, we just really, really uh, love to have her on the show. And if you could see her, you could see the big smile. And you can see her. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com, click on Deep Adventure Radio, and it tells you how you can view this instead of just listen to it. Heather, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you, Bear. Thank you. Well, we're so excited about your, this, this, this ministry of people going out into nature to seek healing, but let's backpedal a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your story, how you got to, uh, you don't have to talk about from the moment you were born, but basically give us, give us a highlight, the next few minutes of how you got to this point in your walk with the Lord. Sure. Absolutely. Well, I've always had this desire, you know, to be close with God, but I never knew how. Oh, tell Um, me about that. You've always had that desire. The desires. Well, my mom laughs because when I was very little, she said, Ma, Heather, you've always had this little altar by your bed. I wasn't mm. quite sure what that was about. And I had a glow in the dark Mary. I have no idea where he, she came from. Mm. And then this medal of Jesus. Mm. And I would spend time just sitting, sitting there. I really, I just knew that God was peace at that point. I couldn't really mm. identify anything more. Wow. No, yeah, it's God, you know, again, he is always waiting for us even before we ask. Mm. So that was very, you know, okay. So fast forward, um, again, not articulating, not really knowing what, how to engage God, um, and to just have a conversation with him. Um, I moved away from the faith for a period of time in college. Did you um, go to another faith or just kind of drift away from the Catholic? No, I just drifted away. Like mm. I, I stayed Catholic, but I just, I didn't make mass a priority. Um, you know, it just was like, okay, it's an inconvenience, you know? So I, at that point, my faith wasn't my own mm. yet. I knew I wanted to, if I were to ever get married, I would need to marry a Catholic man. Mm. So, Lo and behold, I meet my my husband sophomore year in college. He already was graduating, and after our grad after I graduated, we got married, and he was in the navy. And mm. anyway, so we did a lot of traveling, um, but it was the when we both made our Crisio weekends. Usually, the weekends are the men and the women, and we had that sense that we needed to let go a lot in our lives because we were on the fast track. Mm. And God clearly said, "Let go and let God." And after that moment, um, we decided to be open. So God was speaking to both of you about the same thing, even though you went to different weekends, about letting go, letting God, getting your life. You know, the the Christian life is simple. It's not easy, but it's like the Lord, I'm a Benedictine oblate. You know, it's like you, you, the Lord works to simplify, to simplify, not to make it easier. Sometimes it's a lot harder, but it's more clear and get rid of the junk, get rid of the junk. That's right. That's right. So it sounds so simple, let go and let God, but that requires a lot, you know, of grace from God. So I became pregnant very shortly after that. And, um, you know, first pregnancy and right around 23 weeks, um, my son was born and, um, given of God is his name, which we named it before he was ever even born. Um, but before wait, 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 that, wait. what is his name? Nathaniel. And that means? Given of God. Beautiful. Okay. Isn't that awesome? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I was contracting at 20 weeks and he was supposed to be coming at that point. Mm. We had many people praying around around the bedside because I was actually on bed rest in the hospital. Mm. And they said, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it through. Well, this child isn't going to make it. On Christmas Eve, the OB said, okay. You're about to deliver. This child is probably going to live maybe an hour or two. Mm. What do you want to do? Do you want to take Pitocin um, to hurry this process along so that you wouldn't have to always have Christmas time, a depressing time? And Dave and I looked at each other and we were like, we can't do that. 
Lord, like we ask the Holy, the Holy Spirit at, to be right with us during that time. And um, my contraction stopped. Wow. We fell, I didn't know- asleep. we fell asleep to the Holy Father's Mass at mm. midnight and my contraction stopped. Mm. Praise and God. Yes, that was, that's so- how many years ago was that? So he's 21 now. Wow, okay. Yeah, so it's just, and it's been miracle after miracle, a lot of healing from there. Um, I don't know if you want me to share about the miracle at nine, what happened. Well, yes, if, now that you bring it up, everyone's going to, we're not <laughs> sure. going to wait for the book to come out. Yeah, tell us yeah. about that. So so Nate had been experiencing um, intractable seizures, which mean that the seizures would go on and on and on, mm. and we'd have intervention after intervention, two, two and a half hours what later. What do you mean by Intervention. So he would have um, val- uh, Valium, IV Valium given. They would not stop the seizures. Um, diastat rectally, that would not. So there was stop. a medical intervention. Well, a medical uh, intervention. well, how did that make you feel? It was very, very hard as a mom. He was my first. I'm thinking about how vulnerable he is. I'm thinking he might die, but I remembered that he was the only one in his NICU class that survived and thrived mm. at. 1.4, uh, one pound, four ounces, 12 inches long. How early, and how early was he born? 23 weeks. So but what, 23 is, what does that mean? What is, what is the full, how many so weeks early? I mean? So basically it's, it's 23 and a half gestation. So in a 40, 40, uh, week. Oh my goodness. Period. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So it was just a little over what five a miracle. months. And how, so, what, what did that, what effect that did that have on your marriage? Was it tough on your marriage? Uh, there were times, I mean, initially there was the euphoria that he had survived and had made it. But then when we started going through all of these, um, doctor's appointments and, you know, projected outcomes, um, it caused a lot of stress on our marriage. Mm. Um, and we had to really practice, um, trusting God and my prayers would be very simply every morning I would be in the shower and say, God, give me the grace, mm. give me the grace to be a good mom and to be a peaceful wife. <laughs> pray that, pray that we got just a few moments for the break. Can you pray those words again for the people that are listening that need to say that prayer with you? Lord God, I just, I just thank you for our lives. And Lord, I ask that when we have these areas that are difficult, that we surrender them to you so that you can be the one to take over our lives because we know that you are the God who loves us more than we love ourselves. Lord Jesus, we surrender all to you in Jesus name. Amen. We humbly just pray, Lord, that your will be done because we know that your will and your love are the same thing. This is Bear Wozniak. We've been talking with Heather Mackwicks, and your website is what, Heather? www.peakencounter.com. I think God's really going to bless your ministry, and people are going to want to go there and maybe participate in some of your hiking hiking for healing, or I forget how you say that. Oh, but, yeah, um, and a lot more. <laughs> we're talking with Heather Mackwicks. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be back with more. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we need to thank Solidarity Health Share uh, for helping support our ministry. You know, our, our radio show, EW10 doesn't pay us for our radio show. So all the, all the work that goes into this, we'd, we'd have to cover ourselves. But we're fortunate now that we have you standing with us as, as donors, but also Solidarity Health Share and Notre Dame Federal Credit Union both have stepped up to help us uh, bring this show to you. And we want to thank you because family members, you saw Solidarity Health Share. It's kind of like an health insurance, but it's a, it's different than that. And also it, it's true to the teaching of the Catholic Church. And of course, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, I can't speak enough about them. They're, they're amazing. Uh, they got me a, a car loan while I was in the middle of doing a long ride home shoot in Hawaii. So different time zones and everything else and digital signatures. And in the middle of all that, they just made it all happen. So we're so grateful to them. So wherever you are in the world, you can participate, you can use Notre Dame Federal Credit Union too. You know, I remember, um, I had a cabin in the North Fork of the Flathead River, four miles from Canada, just across a mile from the, from less than a mile from the North Fork. And across from the North Fork is Glacier Park. And I remember going up there, um, having to hike into my house, uh, my cabin, on my, my little eight acres there, and little cabin that I built myself with my sons. So it was a very, very little cabin. Uh, but I remember being there, and the first snow had come. 
There were no leaves on the trees. The birds uh, had become silent or had migrated away. Uh, there, was no, there was no sound of wind. There was uh, no sound of, um, of leaves being crackled by animals walking on them. There were just, it was total and complete silence. So silent that sometimes I thought I heard, my, I, I, I heard a voice. It was just my mind hearing a voice. But it was because it's so quiet, I could actually misunderstand that it wasn't an actual human being outside. It was just me thinking about a human voice. That's how quiet it is. And we need to get that kind of quietness in our soul. We need to quiet out all of the distractions, separate ourselves from all of that, and have a place that we go every day to have our prayer time, whether it's the liturgy of the hours or meditating on uh, in Eucharistic adoration or whatever it is. You need to have that place where you have your quiet time, where you can actually hear Jesus knocking on the door of your heart. You need to um, give yourself the opportunity to hear God's voice, meditate on his word, and be, and, and, and be a filled uh, with a sense of his presence. We're talking with Heather Makowicz. She has her website, www.peakencounter.com. She leads uh, kind of like walking retreats, uh, taking people on hikes through nature and, and, and teaching, but also giving them a chance, more, more like a guide, giving them a chance to have uh, time alone with the Lord and let the Lord speak to them. Heather, uh, you were telling us a little bit more about your, uh, your son, Nate, uh, has been a real faith walk for you. Yes, absolutely. And your family. And so did you, yeah, tell, us, tell me the impact on that and your heart and your, your family's heart. Well, I'll tell you, um, Nate reminds us every day when we can be so complex in our minds um, about just that thirst for more and more knowledge, that Nate reminds us that it's important that, that we are like a child. And he's so simple, but so direct and so much loving God. He, he says his prayer every day is when he goes downstairs um, on the treadmill and he'll sing at the top of his lungs. And even if we're like we're in the quiet zone in our prayer time, mm-hmm. we're hearing him saying, our God is an awesome God. <laughs> wow. Praise God. Yes. Yeah, so he's so uninhibited. And can't we be that way, too? And God just continues to unfold um, his faithfulness and Nate's care. Well, let me ask you this question. Uh, People who are listening to this or watching it, watching the the video version of this. Yeah. You know, there's a way that people can kind of walk along the side of the, the, like there's a beautiful waterfall here, Manoa Falls. And people walk up there, but then they just put their toes in the water. Um, You can go in toe deep, ankle deep, knee deep. Or you can dive in. Can you tell us about that experience you and your husband had uh, at that waterfall? I think it was, was it where? Is it in Mexico? Where was it? Can that you... was actually um, in Puerto Rico. Oh, that's um, where my son lives. Oh, really? Tell, tell me about, uh, he's in Puerto he's in uh, San Juan. He's, he okay. so works in the disaster months. recovery. Tell us about yeah, well. that moment that your husband and you shared and what, what it teaches us. Well, so... So we were going under the waterfall and Dave and I are very much adventure seekers. So we were like, okay, let's swim to the other side. But I'm, I'm stopped in my tracks going, I'm going to drown. And Dave's like, don't worry about it. I'm just, I think I know what waterfall you're talking about. Is it it like Lamina or something? Well, is it, uh, is it rather, it's pretty accessible from the road, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I've been there. Yep. I know which one you're talking about. And people about, yeah. go all the time, right? Mm-hmm. But I have this, I, I'm always routinely being asked to push back, back, past my fears. And and so he got to the other side and he's looking at me saying, you can make it. And I'm going, I don't know. And he's like, yes, you can. Just trust me. Mm-hmm. And isn't that like how God often says to us, right? Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, I'm, I'm holding my breath and I'm going under. So I did, but I had to go under to get to the other side mm-hmm. and to see the beauty of the underside of the waterfall. What do you mean the right? underside? You mean from underneath or From on the back the, side? The underneath, yeah, the back side, yeah. Um, so, so right, and unless we, we jump in, knowing again that we're not jumping alone, I had Dave, you know, behind me, but, but in our spiritual walk, knowing that we're not doing it alone. God is with us. And he's saying to us, just keep looking at me. Mm. Just keep your eyes on me. Just like Peter, you know, when we start to doubt and look down, we can begin to sink. But if we're keeping our eyes on him, 
it helps us to focus on the ultimate goal, which is to be one with him. Yeah, you know, I was out you know, tandem surfing the other day um, with a with, uh, young, young girl, like, I don't know, you know, high school age girl, maybe college age girl, probably high school. And uh, we I, I, we met the, this beautiful couple with their daughters. I'll take you girls tandem surfing. And there's a there's a way that when we tandem surf, and, and the waves got big, like eight to ten foot. And I, I want them to hold my hold me right next to my elbow with both hands, not my forearm because that'll drown me, not my bicep because that'll drown me, but hold me right there, be beside me, like a man and a woman should be. You know, although these are just yeah. young girls. But when a big wave came. She let go and tried to grab up, try to get up on the surfboard. And I had her off to the side, off the board where I could mm -hmm. protect her. And I, and then I, I taught her, hold me with this. I taught, taught her again when the next bigger wave was coming. Hold me here and here. Turn your eyes towards my eyes. Because mm -hmm. when, 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 when you turn your eyes towards me, then your whole body rotates towards me and I can protect you. So there's this thing of keeping, keeping your eyes on the Lord. And I remember, Heather, too, when I was a little kid, maybe five years old. My dad was doing some repair work up, up, work up on the roof, you know, by the uh, eave, not the eaves, the, the, the gutter. And uh, he set me up there. And that was all, I was happy. He was a little bit nervous. But then he said, jump. He jumped into his arms. Mm -hmm. And his arms were probably no more than three inches away from my, my shoulders where he would catch me. But there came a moment when I had to just trust him and jump. And I think there's people right now that are saying, that's good for Heather. One of these days, I wish I could have an experience like that. Faith, faith isn't like walking in, touching it with your toes. Faith is a leap of faith. Dive it in. Is an, and it's so important to have at least one other person to accompany with you. Mm. The, the best thing about my job as a spiritual director is really just to create the space and accompany people and deeply listen to their story as we're discovering God already moving in their life. Mm. Right. And when we're walking with at least one other person, like, again, I'm coming back to the accompaniment of the uh, road to Emmaus. God is revealed so profoundly that way, and it helps us to stay on the walk. You mean, when, tell us about the road to Emmaus, what you mean by that. Just, um, and, you know, so here they were, um, the two disciples oh, okay. uh, walking, and and were our hearts not burning? So they were discovering God with by just having that conversation. Mm. And then, but he wasn't fully revealed until... Mm you know, they mm -hmm. came to, was and I was thinking about Philip and the, and the, and the eunuch in the oh, chair. He was reading and Philip joined him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, oh and th so there is, there's something really a uh, Catholic understanding of what you're saying. That's so yeah. different. The Catholic church has always emphasized community. Yes. Where, um, and that there's salvation, not just an individual salvation. There's through community of the church, the body of Christ is saved. And so it's not like this Lone Ranger sort of thing that sometimes you see in the Protestant world. Well, I was saved and all this, but we, we see we're, we're, we're in this together. That's why the sacrament of confession, so many people misunderstand. Well, I can go get confession from God anytime I want. Well, yeah, that's true. But there's a certain grace that's released there. And not only are you reconciled with God, but you're reconciled with the church. You're reconciled with mankind. You're reconciled with yourself. We're talking with Heather Makowicz. Where can they find you, Heather? Sure. You can find me on www.peakencounter.com and Peak Encounter Ministries on Facebook and Instagram. Awesome. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. You can subscribe to our newsletters. You can get uh, this uh, radio show sent to you uh, before it even comes out. And don't forget, Long Ride Home is on iTunes, Prime Video, Google Play. It's all over the place. Or you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and sign up to actually receive the, the episodes before we even send them to EWTN. Till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com. 